Welcome to Downtown Sports. My name is Downtown Stephen Brown, and in today's video, guys, I want to talk about the Maple Leaf lineup ahead of Game 5 and talk about some do's and some don'ts, some things that they need to start doing and some things that they really don't need to do. Right off the bat, before anything in regards to the lineup, the two games that the Maple Leafs lost in this series, because the series is two games to two, in Game 4, they took eight minor penalties. And then in the only other game that they've lost in this series, they took seven minor penalties. I don't usually go to Facebook for stats, but I thought this one from the Leafs Nation group was awesome. Perspective. The Leafs were shorthanded seven times last night, so he's talking about game two. That's the most amount of times they've been shorthanded in their last 138 games. And I'm not going to bother going back through the game logs to figure out how many games it was the last time they took eight plus penalties. The point is, is that those two occurrences don't happen very often. The thing about all those penalties are is that they're not just falling from the sky. Yes, the officiating has been loose in this game. They've been calling almost everything, but that's up to the players to adjust to it. It's been consistent through all four games. A lot of those penalties have been self-inflicted on just lazy plays where they're not skating as hard as what they can or what they need to be to keep up with the Lightning. Game one of this series has been the only game so far that's been borderline violent, and the referees, for the most part, have let it be known that they don't want it to be borderline violent, and that makes sense, right? Why would they make their jobs harder for themselves by putting up with all these scrums after the whistles? They're just going to start calling everything, and that's what they've been doing. The Leafs gave Tampa Bay five power plays in this game, one of them being the five-minute major, but for the most part, especially in that first period, they came out skating really hard, and they showed Tampa Bay why they're the faster team. So much so that in Game 2, the Tampa Bay Lightning started playing a neutral zone trap to try to slow down the Toronto Maple Leafs. They need to start skating. And here's the lineup for Game 5. It's looking like they've reunited Michael Bunting with Austin Matthews. They split up Tavares and Nylander again, and we'll get to Sheldon Keefe's quote on that in a minute. But I know for a lot of people, the thing that's going to stick out is that there's no Wayne Simmons, there's no Kyle Clifford, and Justin Hall is still in the lineup. Just to touch on Wayne Simmons and Kyle Clifford really quickly here, with the amount of penalties that are being called in this series, I don't think it's possible to sway momentum with physical play. You're just going to end up getting yourself into more trouble like they did in game two. You know, some of those penalties were lazy, but some of them were extracurriculars after the whistles, and it's just not going to be tolerated. But at the same time, I'd feel, I'd feel safer with one of those guys in the lineup, if that makes sense. After the Lightning went 3-for-7 on the power play in Game 2, Sheldon Keefe brought in Justin Hall to the lineup, who is second on the Maple Leafs' blue line in shorthanded time on ice during the regular season. And so far, with Justin Hall on the ice on the penalty kill, the Tampa Bay Lightning have not scored. And no, that's not in secondary matchups. That's up against the Lightning's top unit with Nikita Kucherov and Steven Stamkos, Brighton Point, and Victor Hedman. Um, no goals against. I can highlight exactly two plays where Justin Hall has made Pivotal mistakes. One on the holding penalty that he took on Brandon Hangle, but if you watch the replay carefully, when Hall gets his stick around him, Hangle grabs onto it and then falls onto the ice. So 50-50 on this play for Hall, pinching in and not staying in front of the play to be put in that position, but also it's a sneaky, dirty play by Brandon Hangle. The other being right at the start of game four, and he sends a pass up off the boards here, and the Lightning end up intercepting it. They hold the Leafs in the zone, and they end up scoring the opening goal a minute in. I don't think that Justin Hall made the right play here, but he is definitely not the only one to blame for that opening goal. The Tampa Bay Lightning were applying a lot of pressure off the forecheck on the Maple Leafs defenseman all game long in game four, and there is no forward support here whatsoever. As I pointed out in my last video, Kasha completely blows the zone, and as the play continues, he comes out of the zone, and once this Lightning player comes in and retrieves the puck, then he loops back in and rejoins the defensive effort here. He leaves Hall out completely to dry. Still... Two wrongs don't make a right. I know that this is a freeze frame. I know that the lightning player is really barreling down on him. I just would have liked to have seen Hall do anything other than just scroll the puck up ice. If he's looking up ice, he would have saw that he had no forward support at all. I know the play happens quickly. Um, if What I would have liked to have seen him done really is just ice the puck on purpose. You get a whistle. I know it's still in your zone, but that gives you an opportunity to go over it on Zaykasha and say, hey, what the hell was that? I own a lot of Leaf jerseys. None of them have Justin Hall on the back. I am not a Justin Hall fan. I don't particularly enjoy having to defend him. But if you're going to go after him, go after him for something that was 100% his fault. If he does something in Game 5, well, then that's the power of hindsight. But I'm looking at the Leafs' penalty kill over the last two games, and I'm really liking what I'm seeing from him. So I understand 
why Sheldon Keefe has put him in the lineup. I don't even know why that's the main story or the main topic here because all season long, I specifically remember everyone saying, oh, if the star players don't show up when it matters the most, it's really not going to matter what the rest of the roster does. I don't get angry or yell very much in these videos, but I'm going to throw three things out at you guys and I want you to list them in order of concern in the comments section. 15 power play opportunities for the Lightning in both of the games the Leafs have lost in these series. Matthews and Marner being shut down in games three and four by Anthony Sorelli, Braden Point, uh, Alex Kalorn, Victor Hedman, and Eric Cernak, or Justin Hall, who plays on the third pair. The correct answer, by the way, are the 15 power play opportunities, Matthews and Marner being shut down, and then because they both really pissed me off, I'm throwing them both in again at number three. Here's a Sheldon Keefe quote on splitting up Tavares and Nylander again for Game 5. The focus for me is not necessarily having Nylander and Tavares apart, as much as it is having Mikheyev and Kerfoot, and then Engvall and Kampf, on two separate lines. Sure. Sheldon Keefe first split up John Tavares and William Nylander in this 4-2 loss over the Montreal Canadiens, where William Nylander egregiously blew a back check on a David Savard goal, and... From that point onwards to the end of the season, the Maple Leafs went 14-2-2. This series is tied two games to two, and they've gotten almost nothing from John Tavares and William Nylander uh, when it matters. I know that Nylander scored two goals in game four. I know that Tavares set him up for a really sweet feed. That was probably the best that either of those guys have looked in the entire series, but it was after they were already down 5-0. That's not showing up when it matters the most. And I'm not pinning game four on just two guys. That was a collective losing effort from the entire team. I'm just saying the series is tied two games to two. Could you imagine where they would be if they would have gotten something from those guys when it matters the most? Sheldon Keefe got absolutely flamed for this quote after game four. And like I said in my last video, if you're looking at the way this series has gone, the first two games they split in Scotiabank Arena. That would mean that the next three out of five games were at Amelie Arena. Tampa Bay has effectively taken home ice away. They split the two games in MLA Arena, and that means that the next two out of three games in the series are at Scotiabank Arena. So what the Leafs effectively did on that road trip was win back home ice advantage, and in a series where line matching has been so important, like we saw in game three and four, the Lightning have a specific trio where five guys that they want to match up against Matthews and Marner. And it's worked so far. Philippe Deneau last year, I understand it's frustrating, to see those guys get shut down by anyone. But it's a head coach's job to put his guys in the best possible situation to succeed. And with last change in two out of the remaining three possible games in this series, Sheldon Keefe has got to do his absolute damnedest to get those guys away from them. I know that Morgan Riley and Ilya Labushkin have been absolutely shredded the last couple of games, but the truth of the matter is, is that if the Lightning are going to be so insistent on forechecking really hard and putting a lot of pressure on those D-men off the back wall... The wingers are going to have to do a better job at providing support and giving them an outlet. For Riley and Labushkin, they played well together in games one and two. Hopefully they can replicate that here in game five on home ice and just put games three and four behind them. But I do understand the worry uh, when people talk about that pairing because Riley hasn't been very good defensively, but Labushkin has also contributed to them getting hemmed in their own zone the last couple of games. If Jack Campbell's 889 save percentage worries you at all, you just need to take a look at Vazovsky's 888, and it'll probably make you feel better. There's been a lot of goals on either side for these two teams. We haven't seen this combination of fourth line before, but at the same time, in game one, the Maple Leafs really didn't have a fourth line after Kyle Clifford took the game misconduct. They were rotating through guys on the fly. In Game 2, it absolutely sucked. In Game 3, it was decent. And then in Game 4, it sucked again. I really don't know what to expect from it. I really don't know how much ice time it'll get. I guess we're just going to have to see. I think that the changes that the Maple Leafs made up front in their lineup are going to have more of an impact than anything that they could have done on the back end. Because again, like we said, they need the forwards and the wingers specifically to pitch in some more support if Tampa Bay is going to be forechecking that hard. And like we said, and like we've been saying all year long, it does not matter what the other guys do if the star players don't show up. Let's see what their response is in Game 5.